Good morning on a Friday morning, Top Fan Rivalry followers. It is Bill from Top Fan Rivalry. We are excited. It is the weekly review. Jackson, how are you doing this fine Friday morning? I'm doing good. Doing good. How are you? Don't get too excited, Jackson. Calm your emotions, Jackson. Calm your emotions. All right. Well, I'm excited to, to have Jackson on. Let's get it started, everybody. Jackson, what do you got for number one this week? Uh, how about Felix Batista going down for Baltimore? And how big of a deal that is. Yes. yes. So Balt <clears throat> Baltimore's bullpen was already needing a couple arms. Probably one of the best closers to baseball. Probably for the rest of the year. I don't know how he comes back from a UCL some degree of a UCL injury that, you know, they're playing the Dodgers card. He's hurt. Yeah. You know, 15, 15 day IL, you know, what teams do now, they tell you 15 day IL. And then a week later, they're like, ah, sorry, he doesn't have an arm anymore. Yeah. How, how do we miss that? You know, so that's a really big blow to the Baltimore who's looking to make some noise in the postseason. No doubt that they'll still make the postseason. It'll just be, that's going to severely dampen their chances of, you know, making a deep run. Yeah. And, uh, Baltimore, yes. Baltimore has a very good shot, but nothing's locked and loaded yet. Nothing's locked and loaded. They can go on an eight-game losing streak and be done. They can, but but with 30 games left, you know, I, I feel like they have a comfortable enough lead in the wild card at least. Yeah, exactly. Wild, wild, wild card. I'm not saying the division's on lock. I'm saying a, a playoff. Off spot. So Texas is and the third wild card spot, Baltimore's eight games ahead of them. So, yep. Yep. I mean, it would take an eight-game losing streak. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Exactly. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, okay. Are you ready for my number one? I am. This was debated by you and I last night. But who wins that pesky NL um uh MVP and and I'm gonna make an argument right now for Freddie Freeman. He's having a season of all seasons. He's gonna have more than 200 hits this season. He's gonna set the Dodgers record for most doubles ever. Potentially be one of only seven players, I believe, who had 60 or more doubles in a season. So I'm liking where Freddie's at. And even if Freddie were a brave, I would still say the same thing. You got to give much love and respect. Just like I say, you know, Acuna, you don't go wrong if you give it to Acuna with 60 stolen bases or 61, whatever he has. And you definitely don't go wrong giving it to Matt Olson after his 312 home runs this season. So you can't go wrong. But overall, I'm liking Freddie Freeman. Argue with me. Uh Two, two problems with Freddie Freeman. One, doubles aren't a, a sexy stat for the sports writers. They don't really care about doubles. Right. And two, he, he plays first base on the Dodgers, who've been good for the last, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years, you know? So Wait a second. So you're punishing you're punishing the player because the team's been good? Yeah, so the, the, the voters expect excellence from the Dodgers already. Okay. The, the Dodgers are just good. So their players are just kind of good. So they're going to blow off maybe, you know, a weird 60, you know, 60 double season by just saying it's just doubles. Yeah, voters are weird, Bill. It's a, it's, it's, it's a story contest. Who can tell the best story? The, the next closest person to him is Candelario, and he's got 37. 37. He's got, uh, uh, he's got two uh, triples, stolen bases, He's uh, what is he in the MLB with stolen bases? He's in the top uh, 30. He's got 17 stolen bases, but hits 178. He's batting 338. Hard to make an argument, Jackson. It's hard to make an argument and say, sorry. I, you're... I, I, I'm just telling you what I know about MVP voting that Betts I like has. It. I know Betts has the, the better looking stat page and Acuna has the, you know, the, the the power speed. So unfortunately for Freddie, I, I don't I think he's just gonna there's gonna be too many split votes on it. He's gonna get some first place votes, but it's gonna be all over the place. It's like throwing darts at a dartboard at this point. 
Okay, can can we just call a spade a spade here for a second, Jackson? If these guys call you, don't send them a voicemail. Ask them to give me a call and let me know ahead of time. I won't send them to voicemail. I'll tell them you got to put your your hat in the ring here. And if you don't give it to Freddie, please, for the love of everything decent and holy, tell me why not. Right? And yeah. don't just say, oh, that didn't work out. I mean, Freddie had 199 hits last season, hit 325. 21 home I, runs I'm and not, 100 I'm not, RBIs. Hold on. I'm not saying Freddie Freeman isn't having mm-hmm. – Well, you guys will have to go back to the great live with, with Danny and Jackson. So it'll be a good time. Big guy, that's my number one. Okay. Jackson, what you got for number two? Uh, those, those Seattle Mariners are still streaking, Bill. They have taken okay. over a share of first place. They are and still they have held. They have held on to it. Uh, eight and two over their last ten. Uh, you know, fun fact about the Mariners: they have three pitchers in the top five in WHIP in the major league, which is they just absolutely, which is crazy to me. Seattle has gone on this run. I think they've you know, on like thirty-eight and fifteen over the last two months or something. Absolutely bonkers. Uh, they just had a franchise record for wins, which is really impressive because the 2001 team, you know, set the all-time wins record. So franchise record for wins in a month. Um, you know, they don't look like they're going to slow down uh, with how good their pitching's been. And now their lineup is finally starting to click. Do you think Seattle's going to start to, to pull away from Houston here? Especially with, on a side note, especially with the collapse of the Texas Rangers. I'm no. calling the Rangers winning that division. Wow. That's a bold prediction. Now, I, I just said this on a live yesterday. I did not, however, say I did not. And I want to be very clear about this. I did not, however, say that the um, the Rangers would go further in the playoffs than the Astros. Who cares who wins the division? Just get to the dance and then, you know, pack up your dance cart. Right. Um my, I, I do think that Texas has a shot to, um, to win that division. Now, in my opinion, in my opinion, oops, uh, you have a, how do I say this? Um, in, in my opinion, the, uh, all roads go through Houston to get to the World Series. That's just my own opinion. Now, if you look at what Texas has left, and this is why I say this, if you look at what Texas has left, they have three at home against the Twins. They have three at home against the Astros. They have three at home against Oakland. They have three or four on the road with uh, Toronto and then with the Guardians. Three at home with Boston, three at home with the Mariners, three away in Anaheim, and then they complete their their um, uh, season in Seattle with four games. So you still have seven games left with the Mariners, but sprinkled in there, you've got teams like the Red Sox who will be out by then, the A's who are out mid, uh, mid-April, mid and the Angels who are out mid-May. So um, I, I just – I have a hard time not believing that – these guys, um, these now I'm just, you know, for fun. And I apologize for those of you that are listening to this and not watching it, um, that I am taking a little second, but here, here, if you look at this, this is Seattle three against the metropolitans in New York, three against, um, Cincinnati in Cincinnati, four against Tampa Bay, three at home against the angels, Three at home against the Dodgers, three at home or three away with the A's, three away with the Rangers. Then they conclude their season with three at home with the Astros and three or four at home with the Rangers. So Seattle's got the meteor part of the schedule. Just saying. It's it's gonna be a wild, wild finish, I'll tell you that. Yep. I agree with you. Um, And I'm going to stay on your same bandwagon for number two. Okay, you ready for my number two? Yeah. 
Um, I am going to make a another bold prediction here and say, as of the start of business today, September 1st, that um, the Chicago Cubs are three games out of first place, but will win that division. Tell me I'm wrong, Jackson. It's okay. Won't be the first time that wrong. somebody's told me I'm wrong or last. I, I think you're wrong. And here's here's my counter argument. Milwaukee okay. just got their second best pitcher back. They got Brandon Woodruff back for the stretch run, and that's going to be tough. I know the Cubs just took two out of three from the Brewers, but it's going to be big for Milwaukee having the one-two punch at the front of the rotation of two guys that just go out there and, you know, they'll give you six, seven innings like it's, you know, they're clocking in for their four-hour shift and then leaving when the place looks spotless. They just come in, do their thing, and they, they're done. <laughs> so so September 1st through September 10th is tough for the Cubs, or including a doubleheader on Friday um, with the Reds. Three with the Giants, four with the Diamondbacks. And then you've got three with the Rockies, three with the Diamondbacks. Oh, are... What's that? What was that? That's a, big NL, that's a big 10-game stretch for the NL wild card right there. Absolutely it is. But then you've got three with the Rockies, three with the Diamondbacks, three with the Pirates, and three with the Rockies again. So in, in a span of 13 days – the only team that's over 500 that you play um, in that 13-day span is the Diamondbacks. Everybody else, Colorado for three, Pittsburgh for three, Colorado for three again. That's And then they end their, they end their season, three with the Braves in Atlanta, three with the Brewers in Milwaukee. Oof. But I, I still, I mean, it's a crazy schedule, but I still think, and that wild card is going to get exciting. But I still think that um, you have the Cubs winning that division. All right. Interesting take. What do you got for number three? Uh, no. Number three, I was back series of this weekend. We got a big weekend for baseball. Uh, Baltimore plays Arizona for three games starting today. Uh, Minnesota plays Texas. Uh, Tampa Bay plays Cleveland, who's still in play for the AL Central. Uh if you keep going, keep scooting on over the Nash Leagues where it gets really spicy. The Braves play the Dodgers, started a four-game series last night. Uh, Milwaukee plays Philadelphia at home. The Cubs are at, at Cincinnati, like you said. The Giants are at San Diego. And Arizona plays Baltimore. Yeah. yeah. So what a wonderful Labor Day weekend. And we all get a three day, you know, we all get, you know, this nice three day weekend to kind of process what's going on here because it's going to be crazy. Yes. Now, Jackson, can I just tell you about my Labor Day weekend? Sure. Okay. Tomorrow, Saturday morning, I hop on a flight at 630 out of LAX. LAX, Jackson. And Jack, I'm making a big deal out of that because Jackson knows how far LAX is for us. Yeah, um, flying to Houston. We're going to the Yankee uh, Astros game on Saturday. Then we're going to drive over to Globe Life and catch the game the next day. Then we're driving back um, and doing a watch party that Monday in Houston. Wow, you, you got a busy three day weekend. <laughs> yeah. it, I'm over here. I'm over here taking it easy, smoking some brisket, enjoying yeah. the enjoying. The- Yep. No. So we're we're not gonna mess around, but I I agree that like you said, that schedule's crazy. Schedule's crazy. All right, you ready for number three? I am. Uh number three. How do the and I'm not picking on these guys, but how do the San Diego Padres rebound from this season? Um, of course you're watching all the clips. You've seen them like I have. There's clips all over the place of Machado, the big four, right, sitting up. Machado and um, Soto talking about it. they don't care who they play in the World Series, but they're going to the World Series this year, and they're going to meet them. They're not even going to make playoffs. Um, well, they, they're not mathematically limited, and sure, they can go on a seven-game, eight-game run and make it interesting, but they have three or four teams that they need to leapfrog over. It's going to be tough. They're going to um, need to win like 25 of their last 30 games or something. Yeah, the – 
the the tensions have boiled over in the locker room and in the dugout. We saw Manny Machado um, take a bat to a cooler uh, this week. Poor cooler didn't have a chance to defend himself, um, but at least Manny was hitting something. Um, so you, you know, I I saw a funny a funny comment on that video that said, you know, he can't hit the broadside of a barn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Manny. I, I had to. The, the opportunity. God bless was- the person that did that. That's awesome. But how do the Padres recoup? I like how do they rebuild and restructure, or do they even do they just chalk it up as, "Hey, we had a rough year injury wise, but we're coming at it again next year." What do you think, Jackson? I think they just. I think the number one thing San Diego can't do is panic. Don't go into okay. the off season and try to rip apart the team again. Don't panic. They they're what zero and eleven in extra inning games this year. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Different story. You're talking about the Padres are right there in contention. So well, I think the a, a big thing for them will be don't let it get under your skin and just show up and play. Pretend like this season didn't even happen. Just act yeah. like you got bounced in the first round. It's the same result. Well, if you, you and I both know. Less. You and I both know that the Shohei drama will unfold as it's going to in the offseason and he's going to go to one of the 30 teams um but in the off or in the trade deadline we're only going to be speaking about two names and that's Juan Soto and Pete Alonso um because you know how that rolls and so I just I agree with you you cannot panic but it's it's hard when you're when you're such a good team they were comparing them to murder's row the 27 Yankees before the season started. That's a tough, tough feat. I agree. But Jackson, you and I both can, if we're honest, and I've said this a hundred times, I don't know if you want to be honest about it, but if you're honest on paper, you and I can both agree that we thought that the National League Championship Series was going to be um, the Mets against the Padres. As good as the Braves are and as good as the Dodgers are, both of us were concerned about both of those teams. Tell me I'm wrong. I concerned about the Mets and the Padres, yes. Thinking that actually the Mets were going to make it to the National League Champion Series, Championship Series, probably not. <laughs> You're thinking Mets are going to Met, right? Yeah, I, I was thinking it was probably going to be the Padres against somebody else, the Dodgers or the Braves. But yeah, yeah it it it's one of those things, you know. It they seem unlucky, and they've literally been the most unclutched team in baseball. If you look at they, you look at their team numbers, and you're like, how does this team 62 and 72? But then you just dive into the runners in scoring position with less than two outs. You know, guy on second, nobody out. Guy on third, one out. And it, the numbers are terrible. It's – they don't play good situational baseball. All you can do is, you know, get to the end of the season, work on it in the offseason, and just try again next year. <laughs> That's yeah. all you can really do. Exactly, exactly. Well, Jackson, do you have honorable mentions this week? Uh, congratulations to Alex Cobb for almost throwing a no hitter. Um, he was so close. Props to him for going out there and throwing 135 pitches, getting the complete game. Uh, but yeah, I think that's my only honorable mention this week. The um, I I like that one. I think my other honorable mention is. You and I are going to talk a lot about this, I know, in the offseason, but the difference between baseball fandom and business of baseball. Um, the honorable mention this week is how some teams uh, waiver wired half of their team. And what was interesting, um, and what was, in, what was interesting was legit how bad uh, the Angels wanted Lucas Giolito, and then they just dumped him. And so I just, that's kind of a unique scenario for me. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, it is strange that they would dump him, but you know, all the players were claimed. It puts them into the first tier of the luxury tax, which on the, on the chance that Shohei signs with a different team, instead of a fourth round pick, now you get a second. So. Yep. It's something. Yeah, they need to rebuild. Um, I don't know, Jackson, if you've read the Shattered Halo article yet um, that's in the locker room uh, that was written by your friend John, yours and my friend John. 
Um, but he broke it down. It was insane. So you got it. Yeah, uh, I, I, I have, I haven't read it, but I can, I can only imagine what it says, knowing and kind of keeping an ear on, uh, you know, Angel Sports Talk. Uh, shout out to the Super Halo Bros for that. Um, but you know, just keeping an ear on it, and you know, it, it's the fan base is defeated, man. You know, you think the Padres fan base or the Mets fan base feels bad. Think about the Angels fan base, you know. The entire year was just kind of, you know, the Angels being on the cusp until they just fell apart. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. And it's it's insane. Um, but I, I, it's a good honorable mention. It's a good honorable Yeah. I, I mean, just when you think it can't get worse, you're like, it can't get any worse. You know, they go on that losing streak. You know, they get all the trade acquisitions, right? All right, things are up to, on the uptick. They lose like seven games in a row. You're like, all right, it can't get any worse. Then, you know, then Mike Trout's hurt, and then he's still hurt, and then Shohei loses his elbow, and it's like now they have to cut all these players to get under the luxury tax. It's like, you know, yeah. they're going to play with eight, they're gonna have to play with eight fielders tomorrow or something like that because of some <laughs> weird rule by eight Major League Baseball. Wouldn't surprise me. But, it's kind of like the Bad News Bears. I only get an A count. Oh, well, I'm going to put my left fielder and my right fielder. I'm going to play my left or right center. We'll be fine. No, it's a forfeit. It's a forfeit. Everybody forfeits. <laughs> you know, if that if that happened, I'd just be like, you know what? Let's just <laughs> have fun golfing, boys. <laughs> exactly. Enjoy. <laughs> Take an extra month off. Well, Jackson, I love doing these with you. I can't wait till next week to do the next one with you. Um, enjoy the uh, Enjoy the day. And um, let's just uh, keep communications open. And also, I've got something for you, so I'll stick. I'll stick around and talk to you for a second. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, top fans. Don't forget to go to the locker room. Topfanrivalry.com. Enter the code Jackson, all caps. Get yourself some merchandise for cheaper. Get ten percent off. Right. Go, go get a go get a jersey. Have you seen all the pictures of the people wearing the jersey? If you haven't, go on to Instagram. Go follow Top Fan Rivalry. And go check out all those sweet jerseys that are coming off the website. There you go. We'll do it. All right, my friend. I will talk to you later. All right. Bye.